Hey guys, this is Jordan DeMedio. Um, this is my video log for week one. Um, of course, this is the exercise science class. Um, one second. Okay. So anyways, I want to talk about, I made a trip to uh, Grandfather Mountain in Boone last week to kind of make like a little like winter mountain type hike thing. Um, so yeah, it was Grandfather Mountain. Um, I went via the profile trail, which is just a, kind of like an alternate route up there. And then once I got to the pr top of the profile trail, I turned and I did, did kind of some of the Grandfather Mountain Trail. Um, so I like to go to this place because, you know, I went there in December with my friend and it was really difficult. And I kind of got defeated a little bit. So then I, it was like a little challenge for me. So I kind of like trained a little bit, got my cardio better, and then I went back. And did a whole lot better the second time I went, and this is the third time. Um, so, lots of, it's difficult for me, and I guess it's pretty technical as far as trails go in North Carolina. I've seen online that people have said it was the most uh, technical hike in North Carolina. Um, and the grandfather, like, there's a lot of, like, boulder hopping and stuff like that. It's probably a better word for it, but. Yeah, so it's it's pretty difficult, and but it's like just difficult enough where it's fun, and I don't feel like it's too dangerous. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I kind of since I went back, since I went the first time, you know, I got more experience with carrying heavy pack. I still wore a you know a pretty heavy backpack. I mean, it was only like twenty pounds, but you know it's considerable amount. Considerable amount. Um, okay, so the goal for me. As I said in my intro video, I want to get into mountaineering. So kind of just taking small steps towards that. Um, this is kind of like the best place to do it in North Carolina, I feel like. Because, um, you know, the roots are pretty steep. And it's kind of technical even without ice. But then once ice gets there, it gets like a little bit more, uh, more difficult. Um, so... This time was the first time that I used the actual uh, mini spikes, which are like these, I mean the name's pretty self-explanatory, but this is a picture of it. It doesn't really look like that much, but man, you can step on like any piece of ice and you just don't even like feel like you're ever going to slip. It just feels like Velcro as you step on everything. Um, yeah, so those are the micro spikes. I had a really good time with those. Um, <clears throat> so I woke up, I, I stayed in a hotel overnight over there, and then I woke up around 5. I didn't actually start hiking until like 7.15. I was hoping to do some hiking use, using one of my new headlamps, but it didn't really work out like that. It says it was already dawn by the time I got out there. Um, so anyways, I, I was feeling kind of weak, but I decided to go for it anyway, and I would just turn around, you know, whenever I start having a harder time. So anyways, I just pushed on and it went pretty good. And then I, you know, I'm glad I kept going because it was definitely worth it at the top. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so the first stop that I got to is called Fosco View. This is a picture of it. This is earlier in the season, so keep in mind, it's definitely a lot more snow now. Or when I went, it was at least. Um, so this is when it got a little more difficult up to then it was like mostly just like dirt and mud that you were going on, but this, then it was pretty much straight snow. So I had to kind of make my own trail there. Um, so I did that. I still wasn't feeling great, but then I was like, Hey, I'll, I'll make it to the next, the next point here. And then I'll make it to the profile view and then I'll turn around maybe. So anyways, this is the profile view, grandfather mountain. Um, as you can say, see, it looks like a profile of an old man. So I think that's why I named, they named it Grandfather Mountain. And also why this is the profile trail that I went on. So pretty cool. Um, okay, so we got there. And then slightly above, slightly above there. And a little more climbing, and then you get this Shanty Spring. This is the last sure water source. Um, 
you know, it's like the lowest point. So then once, once you go above there, you're like on the ridge of the mountain and you're just not going to be able to have any access to water. So everybody fills up here. Unfortunately, during the winter, this waterfall stays frozen. So not much, not a whole lot of water there. Um, yeah, so we got there. Past there, that's like where you have to climb a bunch of boulders. It gets a little bit more difficult. So I got up there. Um, then there's the Callaway Gap. I took a right at the Callaway Gap to get to Attic Window Peak. Attic Window Peak was like my biggest destination for the day. This is a picture of me at the top of Attic Window. You can see it's very foggy up there. Um, it was just, I don't know, I'm not sure if it was fog or if it was just snow blowing because it was just that windy. So anyways, you see me bundled up there. And then I got a really good picture at the top here, or a video at the top. Here we go. That's at the top of Attic Window Peak and you can kind of hear how heavy I'm breathing there. Um, so got that, we got that. So af after Attic Window Peak, I was hoping to go to this other peak called McRae Peak, which there's like a big dip and then another big peak. It's you know pretty technical in between there. I didn't realize quite how technical it was going to be. I just wasn't wasn't feeling it. This is a video of the Kuwar, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's just it was so windy. Let's see. Dude. So it's hard to show, but there's like 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Um, it was blowing snow, debris. And then it was, like it's hard to show the depth there, but it's like a few hundred feet that you have to climb pretty much straight up. So, I, you know, I wasn't really feeling that. That's where I decided to turn around. It would have been great to do it all, but it was not going to be safe, so I didn't even, didn't even bother. Um... Okay, what else, what else do I want to show here? Um, so anyways, just a few other shots for fun here. Um, this is another video of the ridge. I'm going to show you how I looked up here. Pretty darn icy. And then this part of the end is So on the one side of me, there's always like this few hundred feet drop, which is... Pretty fun. Um, here's a view of like right over the cliff. And then, so anyways, it was a really good workout. Um, did a lot better this time than I did last time. Most of the day my heart rate is above 100, which is good for me because my resting heart rate's like in the 50s. So that was a pretty good workout. Um, and then I'll show you my um, results on my Fitbit here. It says I did over 17 miles total that day. I think it might have overestimated it slightly, but definitely that 355 minutes is a pretty sizable amount of time to stay, you know, with an elevated heart rate. Um, yeah, so I did that, and then also it was 2,000 feet give or take a elevation change up and down. So that kind of added to the intensity too. Um, I think that's about all I have to say. Thanks for watching guys.